ready. Well, aren't you going to look? <laughs> oh, Neil, you're not coming. Uh, well, St. Louis calls. Oh, I thought you didn't have to be at the convention until tomorrow. Yeah, well, it turns out there's a seminar I got to catch tonight. Oh, Neil, once a year we get a chance to put on the Ritz. As Fred Astaire would say, you're dating yourself, my dear. And you have to skip town. Well, you two go ahead and have fun. I, I don't know how. I'm a very serious fellow. Watch out, St. Louis. If you are suggesting frivolity. Okay, go ahead. We're going to enjoy ourselves, aren't we, Jane? No work, no problems, just unadulterated fun. <laughs> Ladies, you look lovely. You behave yourself. <laughs> Hey, I'll uh, treat you to a subway. To our benefactors, long may they wait. Only more so. Impressed? Very. Once a year, we get a chance to mingle with the people who support us. But the order is to mingle. So I'm going to. Ta-ta. Oh, Nan. You look marvelous. Well, she is marvelous to the core. You know my husband, Tony. Of course. Mm, well enough to be insulted we don't see you anymore. Busy, busy. At least Tony's always busy, busy. Yeah, well, I think I'll get busy right now and see if I can get us a drink. Just because you're a happy housewife type no reason to ignore your husbandless friends. The fact that we're here at all is a major tribute. I've become a stay-at-home and a party pooper. Nancy Powers. Nancy Morgan, honey. <laughs> Jane. Jane Foster, this is Nan Morgan. Oh, how do you do? She sat at your desk. How many years ago? <laughs> Thousands. How are you, Jane? Very well, thank you. Nan accomplished the secret goal of every lady social worker. She got her PhD in social work. No, she got herself a husband and two children. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Mansfield, you're not leaving. Well, hello. Oh, oh, Tony. Uh, Mrs. Mansfield, this is Anthony Morgan, our friend in court. He is a lawyer. A judge. Isn't that marvelous? I'm afraid I must run. My chauffeur is waiting. And when the clock strikes, we get paid overtime. Then I'd have to sell my glass slipper. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came? You met Cinderella. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you said it, not me. Said what? That I've been a friend to you in court. Oh, you have, especially with the juvenile delinquency problem. Have I ever said, I've scratched your back, now you scratch mine? No, never. Well, the time has come. I right. need my back scratched. All right, ready. Just me, uh, get away from this maddening crowd. Is it all that serious? Peggy, I need help. The kind of help that money can't buy. <laughs> Come to the right place, money we haven't got. You know anything about autistic children? Not artistic, autistic. Yes. Inability to communicate with others. They are withdrawn. That's right. Well, our youngest child is autistic. Oh, no, Tony. Well, have you tried to get help? Psychiatrists? From here to Timbuktu. Maybe she can be brought out of it someday. Maybe never. Is that the consensus about... Amy. Oh, yes, we've spent a fortune on diagnosis. Thank God I've made some money, but we have spent it. Child specialist, uh, psychological testing, encephalographs. And the nearest we can get to a consensus is that Amy should be institutionalized. I am told that in an institution she can get some help, some happiness. You want us to locate a place? No, I want you to convince my wife that she has to do it. Well, what about you, Tony? How do you feel about placing Amy in an institution? Well, I feel if it's got to be done, then we've got to do it. Maybe it's the best thing. 
Amy and for all of us. It's not an easy thing to decide to send away a small child like that. I just managed to accept the facts, that's all. Nan can't break her heart. So sorry I didn't know about this. No. Something one doesn't talk about. Why not? Nobody likes a weepy lawyer. Will you talk to her, Hecky? She used to work with you. Maybe you can reach her. She won't listen to anybody else. See, Nan was a social worker, and so Nan knows everything. Talk about the nurse knowing more than the doctor. You social workers certainly know more than the psychiatrist. <laughs> Most of us don't think so. Well, Nan does. So she goes from one psychiatrist to another and rejects his recommendations and then moves on to the next one. She's trying to do everything herself, Hecky, to protect Amy, to educate her, analyze her. Well, why do you think she'll listen to me? Because I don't know where else to turn. Look, I know that we don't qualify for your kind oh, of help. Oh, nobody's that, talking about qualifying. I mean, we're not a member of the hundred neediest cases or something like that, but I need help. Now, did I ever hold back with your juvenile delinquents and whatnot? No. Well, then, Hecky, help me. But Tony, you don't seem to realize what my job is. I can't leap on people and tell them what to do. When everyone else has failed, I don't move in and start twisting arms. Hecky, if somebody doesn't take charge soon, Nan's going to destroy herself. And more than that, she's going to destroy all of us. Hi, Daddy. Hey, you're up late. Can't sleep. What's the matter? Nothing. Hey, come on, tell me. Did you have fun tonight? Yeah. How was the babysitting? Fine. She went right to sleep. Oh. If you keep on getting Mother to go out more often, I'll be the richest babysitter in New York. Hey. Something's wrong now. Come on. Tell me. Hey, you never talk anymore. Something went wrong with you tonight. I want to know what it is. I thought Mother would tell you. Well, she didn't. I let Amy get away. Well, don't you think that's awful? She might have gotten lost. What would have happened to her when she can't even say her own name? It would have been all my fault. I don't blame Mother. You don't blame her for what? Slapping me. I was supposed to be watching her. Your mother... Didn't mean that, dear. She was frightened. No. Hey, relax. Amy didn't get lost, so everything's all right. Sorry your mother blew up at you like that. She's sorry, too. It's all right. It was my responsibility. Go on. Go to sleep. Mm, really? Chit chat. All that time? You're talking about me, weren't you? Always. You were talking about me and Amy. A little, yes. What did you tell her? Nan, I asked her to help. We've got to do something. understand why you had to tell her. The people at Community Welfare Service are friends of mine. It hardly seems the place to go. Well, maybe that's just the place to go, Nan, to our friends. 
Oh, shift the burden off on them, is that it? That's why you always have to involve everybody. You need a third party all that badly? <laughs> Haven't you said enough things about me to psychiatrists and psychologists? I never said things about you to psychiatrists, ma'am. Well, I don't want a loyalty oath. I just want to know what you told Hecky. I hope you told her that to all intents and purposes, I am handling Amy alone. That you seem to spend more and more time away from home. And that you're asking me to be mother and nurse and teacher and guardian and father all at once. Yes, you are. I have to do it alone. You don't have to. You mean to send her away. I didn't say that. Well, that's what you mean. And that's what you talk to Hecky about, isn't it? <laughs> don't you think I know how you feel? The only relief I've seen on your face for the past three years is when a psychiatrist says, send her away and forget you ever had her. That isn't true, Nan. It is true, but I'm not going to give up, Tony. I'm not going to give her up. I don't want any more advice, and I don't want to talk any more to experts. I just want to be left alone to raise my child. Did Amy run away again today? Did you strike Marky? <laughs> I didn't mean to. I've never done that before. Marky had to tell you, thinking I probably wouldn't. Nan, she said she was sorry, that's all. See? See what's happening to, to Marky and to you and me? Honey, we have tried everything. Amy has seen everybody that influence or money can reach and there's nothing for her. <laughs> We've had the answer a long time now. No, that isn't any answer. Listen, Amy has got to get whatever help she can get in this world. And either she goes and she leaves us free to find whatever happiness we can find without her, or I go. And I mean that, man. I love you. I think you still love me, but I'm not going to let this happen. But if you just be patient with me, if you just help me a little, I know I can handle Amy. If you'll just let me well, do that it. That isn't any way to help Amy. Oh, You've got to talk about it. Listen, I've held off on this long enough. Now I'm going to say what I've got to say. Amy? You're waking her up. Okay, Nan. Okay. You don't believe me? Here, smell. Straight bourbon? Well? Oh, Mrs. Zapato, I'm astonished. My son-in-law, now, he hides it in here, in the bottle of his innocente. Well, how old is your son-in-law, Mrs. Lepardo? Oh, he's a kid, 29. Well, I think he's old enough to know a nursing bottle is not the place to hide liquor. Uh, perhaps if he were allowed to have a drink openly. But he's a kid. All right, Mrs. Lepardo. Um, ask him to call me, and I'll make an appointment. Oh, grazie, signorina. Thank you. I I'll send him. I'll send him to you. Grazie. Well, have you solved Mrs. Lepardo's problem of the day? Problem of the morning? She'll be back with another one this afternoon. Mrs. Morgan's here to see you. Nan Morgan. Nan. Hello, Hecky. Well, well, isn't that something? How are you, Miss Beautiful? This is Amy Hecky. She can't. How about a kiss, Amy? No? How about coming over here to my chair? Huh? Come on, right around here. That girl. How about sitting in my lap? There you go. So this is Amy. What are you doing? I lock the door. Why? But I don't want her to slip away. And then I'm holding her. She can disappear in a flash. I know her habits, and I'm responsible. She's my child. Sit down. 
Now, let's see what we've got for Amy. Here's a paper. And a pencil. You like to draw pictures, Amy? Now let's draw something. Look. Here is a lady. Lady? Eh? Lady? She doesn't understand. I know. Here, Amy. You draw something, Amy. She's been tested in that very way by experienced people. I'm not testing her. I'm just being friends. We're friends, aren't we, Amy? I suppose I'd better tell you why I'm here. Yes? Tony wants me to talk to you. Do you want to talk to me? <laughs> not especially. I'm not the one to talk to anyway. It's about help for Amy. You need a mental health clinic. But Amy is being helped. She's really coming along very well. I see that she follows a sort of specified program every day, and I try to work with her. She's quite content, really. No problem being content, is there, Amy? Well, the only problem I have is Tony. <laughs> I can't tell you how often I've sat at a desk like this, across from a specialist, usually alone. Tony's very busy. He's becoming more and more busy, so I usually do things alone. I've been to specialist after specialist. I've seen everyone. I've talked to everyone. Psychiatrists? They can't reach a child like Amy. She can't talk to them. She can't communicate. So they diagnose and bill you and then they tell you that... They tell you what? They tell you that the only facilities for a mentally ill child like Amy are those residential places. Now the last one that was recommended to me is in Rhode Island. Rhode Island, hecky. That's a long way from Manhattan. You like that, Amy? Watch this one. And the cost is fantastic. Some of these places charge as much as four or five thousand dollars a year. Amy, please stop playing with that light switch. And all that money just so that Amy can go away. What if Amy doesn't go away? And there's nothing. There just aren't any educational facilities for mentally ill children. Oh, for the brain damaged, yes, for retarded, for blind or deaf. Do you know what's inside that little head? <laughs> An intelligence as fine as yours or mine, maybe even better. Autism is sometimes related to genius. I've been told that Einstein was autistic. It's all there, inside. She's not retarded and she's not insane. It's as if she were just closed into some dark room and nobody cares enough to reach her, but she can be reached. On Monday morning, every other child goes off to school. And every Monday morning I look at Amy and I think, there's another seven days, another week of vegetation. She just sits there like a little vegetable. <laughs> and somewhere locked inside, all alone is Amy. Amy? Amy? That's why I've kept going to specialists these past two years. It's not in my nature. But I prayed, let there be some other diagnosis. Let her be retarded. Let it be hopeless brain damage. I could accept that, but not this mystery. Not this terribly small hope that somehow, by some miracle, Amy can be well. Amy. Look. Look, Amy. See the lights going off now? See? Come here, darling. Come here. You should thank God there's hope at all. There is hope, I know that much. 
trained people working day and night, there's been success with some Amy's. Am I right? Yes. Then why don't you give her the chance? I am giving her the chance. I work with her every day, almost all day. Yeah. You don't have that kind of training. I have. I know what yeah, I'm doing. I said fully trained people. You don't have that kind of training. Plus, you're her mother. So you don't have the firmness or the perspective right. to help her. Say what you're supposed to say. What am I supposed to say? What Tony told you to say. As a social worker, you should know I don't do what other people tell me to what do. What did he say to you? What did you talk about at the party? Oh, I don't think I had to reveal that conversation. Well, that must have been quite serious. <laughs> don't be afraid. You're not keeping any secrets from me. I know what he said. He said, Nan won't let Amy be put away. I don't think put away is ideal phrasing. Put away! That's what he said, and that's what he wants. I don't think that's the way Tony feels. <laughs> Tony, he doesn't feel anything. He hasn't felt anything for ages. He's removed himself from the problem with his work. He's not strong enough to face Amy, so send her off. Well, what's your solution? This is my child. She was given to me and not to a group of therapists. And she is not going away. All right, Nan. Bye, Amy. I seem to have locked myself in. Yes, I'm afraid you have. May I ask you a question? What about your other daughter? Marky? Oh, Marky's fine. She's devoted to Amy, and she's doing beautifully in school, and she's fine. I'm glad everything's fine. place the little girl somehow, preferably, in a daycare institution. Nan is right, you know. The latest thinking is to keep the child in the home whenever possible. But there just aren't that many daycare institutions. So the doctors say, send them away. Can't we take it on? What do you mean? I mean, can't we try to find a day school? What I mean, could at least do? that. Oh, I have tried. The only places I could locate in the city are too small. There's waiting lists of hundreds. I'm afraid there's no place for Amy. Okay. Secret Agent Jane will get to work. Doing what? I'm going to find a school that will take Amy if I have to build one. Of community. Yes, we're trying to place a child, autistic. Do you have such facilities? You have none? Oh, fine. Thank you very much. Morgan, there's a school in the city for autistic children. 
That is wonderful. Well, it's not a school, really. A, a daycare setup. I just happened to run across it after I exhausted all of the list. It's new, but it's being run by trained personnel. Where is it? East Harlem. It's been set up by the parents. Makes you find no, but it is a beginning. What are you doing? I'm going to call Nan. Of course, uh, the building's a bit grim, and uh, the people aren't the best people. Nan might object. Nan can't object. No, not if she wants help. Maybe she doesn't want help. Maybe that's not what she wants at all. Well, there's only one way to find out. Dial that phone. She look pretty. I think we can go in. Come on, Amy. children she will learn with them you don't know no, you're not going to keep her in that place yes, we no we're not no we're not amy <laughs> this is no more pleasant for me than it is for you but it's amy who's important and she's got that time <laughs> your mind. Which one do you like? I think this one. Well, we haven't got all day. Oh, yes, we have. Amy's in school. Isn't that wonderful? I didn't realize you were so eager to be rid of her. Well, I didn't mean that. Well, then hurry. I want to pick her up early. I don't think they watch those doors as carefully as they should. Take this one. Good night, Mrs. Quintero. Good night, Miss Regan. Marvelous. Oh, not so marvelous. But it's the best we know how to do. Almost everything we do with these children is experimental. This work it seems to work for some of them. All we know is that the day has to be structured, uh, everything in order, everything routine, so that they can begin to trust reality. 
Was that the first word? Oh, no, they've been coming. But words aren't the only solution. Our little friend here can uh, recite whole songs if she wants to. She can recite the alphabet backwards. But this, this starts to mean something. How much hope? Oh, I'm not supposed to say. But a lot, I think, if things keep going well. Well, Amy, I'm glad I came to your school. It's a nice school. How about a kiss? That is the best kiss I ever got. Hello, Marky. This is Miss Hecklinger, Marky Morgan, Amy's sister. Hello, Marky. I'm glad to meet you. I'm a friend of your mother's. How do you do? Mother's in the office talking with a social worker. I'll watch Amy. Oh, that'll be fine. Unfortunately, I have to run. I'll watch her with you. Bye, Amy. See you tomorrow. Bye, Miss Hecklinger. Glad you came. So am I. I'm overwhelmed with admiration. Well, yeah. we don't need admiration. We need facilities. Bye, Marky. The dress? Uh-huh. How's school? Fine, I guess. The fall term just started. Bet you do very well in school. Mm hmm See, I have a lot of time to study. I watch Amy a lot. Amy, don't touch that window. She's all right. She can't open the window. You'd be surprised what she can do. You have to watch her every minute. I bet you do a good job. Marky? What about your friends? How do you find time for them? I don't have many friends. I'm not complaining or anything. It's just that other things are more important. Are they? Well, education, for one thing. You see, I'm going to have to be responsible for Amy someday, and I want to be prepared for that. Well, Amy has to learn to be responsible for herself. Oh, no. Mother says... Mother says what? Well, that I have a special responsibility. That's facing reality. Well, your sister has to learn to be responsible for herself someday. I love my sister. I thought you said you were a friend of my mother's. I am. Well, then you shouldn't talk like that. I'm just facing reality. Isn't that what you said we should do? I bet you don't have a sister like Amy. You don't have someone you love like that. No, I don't. And then you don't really know, do you? Sometimes it seems as if Amy and I are all alone. We're together, even though she doesn't understand me. And that's the way I want it to be, because she's got to have somebody. Tell her what to do and try to get her to go to the bathroom and watch her every minute. Oh, sometimes I hate her so much and I can't understand that because I love her. I don't want to want friends and parties and boys and those silly things. Marky, it is not wrong to want those things. Do you think Amy would take them away from you? Amy doesn't know. Oh, yes, she does. Amy? Amy, what is this? Amy, can you tell me what this is? Finger. I thought you'd left. No, I, um, I stopped with Mrs. Morgan and the social worker. They've been having a long overdue conference. Amy's, uh, well, Amy isn't going to school anymore. Whose decision was this? I can't tell you that. I'm just the teacher. Amy, I'll get your things. Well, Becky. Man, what happened? Amy's been disqualified. Marky, would you take Amy outside and watch her carefully and wait for me? Yes, Mother. Amy? Amy? I want you to listen to me. You're not coming back to school tomorrow, but all your good friends will be here. Sometime you come back and see us. Do you understand? And I'll come and see you. Marky. Mrs. Morgan, I, uh, I wish you'd change your mind. Was this your decision? Could I please have Amy's things? Nan, I'm going to find out anyway. No, it was not my decision. It's the rule. What rule? Whenever you have a child like Amy, you come up against rules. People don't care about the children, they care about the rules. Mrs. Morgan, I don't think that's quite fair. When the school was started, it was decided that the parents would also consult with a social worker. We feel that it's helpful to the child and to the parents. Now, perhaps we're wrong, but that's the way we're doing it, and we can't make any exceptions. Is that the story? Yes. 
They told you that some psychological guidance was part of the program. If you want to call it guidance. And you said no, is that right? Yes. Why? I have my reasons. You think I'd jeopardize Amy's future if I didn't have solid reasons? Well, what about Tony? Shouldn't he be in on this decision? It was hard enough for me to make the decision. Now I've made it. Please leave me alone. I don't understand it. Oh, you'd be surprised at the number of people who refuse help for their children on that basis. Help my child, but don't probe into my mind. I suppose it's very understandable. Not with Nan. Oh, she's not to blame for Amy. You know, she and her family didn't cause Amy. Amy just came to them. Nan? Let's go back and talk with them. I can't take any more talk. Mother? Oh, all right, darling. Come on, Amy, let's go. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, you've got to talk about it. You've got to think about Amy. I've got other people to think about. You and Marky. You know what they want us to do? They want all of us to see a social worker periodically, and then we're to sign forms to say that whatever we say can be used in research afterwards. If Amy continues at this school, then we're all just going to become guinea pigs. Well, if it'll help Amy... And it all includes Marky. You think she deserves that after all she's done for Amy? To have people probing into her life and her mind? Look, man. I've bowed to your superior wisdom for two years now. You were trained in social work, you know something about it. I don't know anything about it. All I know is I have a little girl who was being helped, who was beginning to speak and to play with other children. And I don't care what we have to do. She's gonna get that help. Regardless of what happens to us in the process. Yes! Let's see the psychologist. Let's see this man if they want us it to. It is not a psychologist. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's a social worker. Is that bad? Well, it's bad if we're seen only infrequently and they begin probing areas they're not equipped to handle. It's not the same thing as seeing a trained analyst three or four times a week. Nan, everything's been your way with Amy. Well, not anymore. She's going to get the help she needs, and I mean that even if it has to be residential. Oh, there it is again. That's what you want. It isn't. Get out of here, Tony. Oh, Nan. I mean it. Just get out. I'm going to have to handle this my own way. I'm her mother. I must have some rights. What about me? Do I have any rights? And how about Marky? Hasn't she suffered enough? Suffered? I've tried my best. Oh, she's sick of the whole she thing. She loves Amy. You just call her out here and find out. Just take the trouble to find out how she feels. I'll get her out oh, here. Oh, leave her alone. You say we don't need help. Look at us. Look at what we're doing. You see what's happening right now? We're going right down the drain because of you. Because of me. You let go of me. Listen, if you do this to her, Amy isn't the only one who's sick. You're sick. Marky, we would... I'm not deaf. I heard what you both said. You seem to be making all the decisions. Nobody asked me what I want. I'd like to talk to somebody. I would, because it's not easy having Amy. Well, you go away if you want to. And you take Amy's school away from her. But she's not going away. Because I'm going to take care of her all alone if I have to. Oh, Mommy, I want to help Amy so much. But I don't want to hurt you or Daddy. I love you, Mommy. I love you. Darling, lady, don't you want to say that? So 
we read for a little while? Amy! Amy, please! Why don't you try pretty, please? Hello, Becky. Hi, Amy. How are you? Are you checking up on me? Yes. You want to offer me some coffee? Of course. Isn't it about time for your nap, Amy? Wouldn't you like to take a nap now, darling? This way. Mm -hmm. Sleep if you want to. Is that what she needs? All that permissiveness? I'm not being permissive. No? Who gave her permission to wreck this room? Peggy, what do you want? Has Tony been talking to you? Yes, as a matter of fact, he has. He's coming to see you. But I wanted to talk to you first. I was hoping you'd change your mind. Want to get Amy back to school. Well, we're getting along. I should think it'd be pretty tense for Amy. What? You're tense, aren't you? Well, I suppose I am. Don't you think Amy feels that? Well, maybe she might. Hecky, what is it you want? I want to kick you from here down to the battery. Nan, you can't do this to yourself. Tony is not the only one I have talked to. Marky came to see me. Why? She misses her father. And her feelings about Amy are so confused. She is asking for help. Nan, don't you realize how fortunate you are? Other families blunder on, hiding their mistakes, sometimes destroying each other in the process. You can't hide yours anymore. Thanks to Amy. Yes, thanks to Amy. It doesn't matter to Amy. She doesn't care about us. She may never care about us. She just sits there. And she sees everything. She knows more about you than you know about yourselves. See this social worker, Nan, and work with her, all of you. You have a special child. You need to be a special family. Hello, Nan. Marky and I have been in the park. We've come to some decisions. I think I hear Amy crying. She's not crying, Mother. Nan, Marky and I agree that Amy has got to get help one way or the other. And since there doesn't seem to be any other way, I'm placing Amy in a home. I'm sure I hear her cry. I will go to her. You go to her, Marky. Go to your sister. I'll get the rest of my things. You are not going to take her away. You are not going to take her away. I heard you. You can't take her away. Oh, but I can. I'll take legal action if I have to. do this to us anymore. Not to me and not to Marky. You want us? You think you do, but you don't want us. You want Amy. Well, now you're going to lose us all till I made my mind that Amy's going to have a chance. Don't you understand? We love you. All of us. Not Amy. And what I want more than anything else in the world is for Amy to love me. Give her a chance to learn how. From someone else? Yes. It isn't fair. Taking her away from me isn't fair. I did this. She grew inside me, and whatever she is, I want her. I love her, Tony. You can't take her away from me. You can't. What if she wakes in the night? She doesn't know why she's there or whether anyone loves her. We'll love her, Tony, if we don't. You can't take her away. I don't want to. I did once because I thought it was the only hope for you and me, but now all I want is just for us to be together, all of us, love each other, love Amy. Can we do that? I don't know. I want you 
to take Amy and get her dressed. In her school clothes. And while you're getting dressed, I'll call Miss Regan and tell her to tell your good friends that you're coming back to school. <laughs>